This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. And today we have a very important show, as all of our shows are, because we're purely informational. We don't promote or sell or, you know, I don't say buy this stock or that share or that stuff. But the reason this show is so important, it's about the number one cause of bankruptcy, not only in America, but probably in the world. The number one cause. And every one of us will face it. Every single one of us will face this possible tragedy, and it's possible. And the number one reason people go bankrupt is healthcare. They lose their health, something catastrophic happens to them, they can't afford it. You know, I mean, I don't know if you've seen how much it costs to get cancer treatment or heart treatments and how you can't afford it. So it bankrupts people. So our guest today is a longtime friend, John McGregor. He's the author of the book, The Top 10 Reasons Why Rich People Go Broke. And one of them is healthcare. Because at 75 years old right now, I'm fighting for my health. You know, what I used to do 25 years ago is not, you know, I struggle today and it's health. So all of us, if you're fortunate, you will face it. Either not Maybe not you, but somebody in your family will come to you and say, can you help us out? You know. So John, welcome to the Rich Dad program. And um, I'll give you a little bit of your background is that you're a CFP, a certified financial planner. Would you, would you explain right. the difference between that and just a regular financial planner? Because there's a big difference. There's a massive difference. It's like being a tax preparer versus a CPA. You know, to become a financial advisor today, it typically takes six weeks to pass your series seven, (laughs) six weeks. And you're a financial advisor. You're the steward of people's money (laughs) within six six weeks. weeks. And actually you can do it sooner if you get through that test quicker, but a hairdresser, (laughs) we always, we always laugh about this. It takes a hairdresser about a year to a year and a half to become a hairdresser, not to demean hairdressers, but you can just see the disparity in what it takes to become (laughs) a financial advisor versus a hairdresser. And if you mess up as a hairdresser, the hair, the hair grows back, right? 30 (laughs) days later it's back. (laughs) You can add more color to it or do something. (laughs) (laughs) So a CFP, it's a rigorous program. You have to qualify certain years in the business, um, rigorous background checks. And then, um, and it's a, it's basically about a two year process. And then the exam is excruciating. Um, I was grateful to get through it. So, yeah. It's almost like a law degree because that's what about the same time frames. Yeah. Yeah, it so, is. And then you also were teaching other financial planners and CFPs and all that because that's how well I, you I know I spent a considerable stuff. amount of my, of my career, and I still do, coach and um, and mentor other financial advisors in the industry. Yeah. Good. They need help. Because I'm, I'm laughing because I'm much older than John, but I remember in 74 when I was getting out of the Marine Corps, that 74 was the first year of ERISA, em- yeah. Employee Retirement Income Security Act. Today is known as the 401k. And I remember everybody was being hustled, you know, become a financial planner, become a financial planner. And I'm going, holy mackerel. So every school teacher was quitting their job <laughs> to become a financial planner. And I was, my rich dad was just cracking up. My poor dad thought it was a good idea. Oh, good, you know, school teachers can make extra money. But my, <laughs> but my rich dad was a, you know, an entrepreneur. He says, oh, this is going to be a tragedy. So you're going to have this, you're going to have the poor and incompetent leading the stupid. <laughs> he just thought it was the most horrible thing. But I went, I checked it out. I, you know, I went down to uh, right on Bishop Street, John and I from Honolulu. I went on Bishop Street and interviewed with a couple of these financial planning firms and all that. And my skin crawled. I just couldn't take it. You know, I just said, I don't know anything, but you guys know less than me. The guys who are trying to sell me into becoming one. Mm-hmm. So that's that's why I went to work for Xerox instead because a little more honest selling copiers. <laughs> <laughs> so John, what is this? Um, <clears throat> what what do you have to say with people about this catastrophic yeah. illness or healthcare? What what do you see happening in the future? Well, I'm so glad you uh, you decided to have this this show, and it's always a pleasure to be on the show. This is a, an extremely important topic not only for individuals, but families. And I'll tell you, over the many years of working with thousands of people, this issue of nursing care or long-term care has been one of, if not the most, the biggest financial threat to families. Actually, not just financially, but relationships as well. I mean, you see a lot of sibling infighting when parents need this type of service. 
Um, as parents have little to no savings, they end up living with one of their children because they can't afford a long-term care facility. And this always, always causes problems. And it can be a terrible strain on families. And now suddenly they have to take care of a grandparent or a parent on top of their own family. And it's a huge strain on time and money. Um, and most people think long-term care is covered by the government. It's not. Well, I should say, not the kind of care you want. And we can get into the differences uh, in, in a little bit. But yeah, this is a serious issue for everybody. Um, and and it, it, the statistics just say it all. When you consider every day, 10,000 baby boomers are turning 65 and seven out of 10 people will require long-term care in their lifetime. Seven out of 10, that's 70%. And of those who need it, on average, they need it for two years. 20% need it for five years. So it's a huge financial strain. And how much, so, how much is long-term um, old age care? Have to call it, how, long, how much does it cost on average? Yeah, so in fact, I just pulled up the recent numbers uh, yesterday. And it's, it's, it's amazing. And it really depends on where you live. And there's three types of care. You have home care, you have community care, and then you have a facility, like a long-term care facility like, like you own in Arizona. But the average cost, and, and I'll just pull this up, and I'll just use Arizona as an example. For a semi-private room, you're looking at $79,000 per year. That's on average. A private room is about $96,000. And using our, our state of our old lovely home state of Hawaii, semi-private rooms one hundred and fifty thousand dollars per year, and a private room is one hundred and seventy thousand dollars per year. I mean, think of what that does to someone's four hundred one k. A lot of people don't make that money when they're working. You know what I mean? It's like twice as much as they earn when they're working. And imagine what happens when the family gets saddled with the bill. Yep. So that's where the fighting starts. Yep. 66% of caregivers use their own retirement and savings funds uh, to pay for this. And within a year, it could just be wiped out. When you consider the average 401k balance for someone 65 or, or older is about $250,000. That could be wiped out in a, in, a, in a year or year and a half. And health is something we all face. I, mean, it's a, I don't care how healthy or unhealthy you are, you'll face health, health, health yep. problems. And that's, that's why we... Um, want to have this program have you on it, but how you prepare for it, because as John made the comment is, I decided the best way to provide for my health care is own the building. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> <laughs> so it's really a great deal. I make a lot of money, I own the building, you know, and I've reserved the penthouse in it, and uh, <laughs> I'll, get the, I'll get the best health care because I own the frickin' building. You know? I hope you're saving me a room, Robert. <laughs> And uh, anyway, I mean, the, the classic quote I, I, I see often, it's a cartoon. It's, it's a husband and wife talking about their retirement and said, well, honey, if we just delay our retirement and have an early death, we'll be just fine. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I, hate, I hate to say that. That was my saving grace was both my mother and father died almost instantaneously. My oh. mother was there one day and dead the next. Yeah. And the same as my father, he was just there, there for like three months and died, dead. Wow. So it was kind of a blessing in many ways. Mm -hmm. But uh, Kim's parents, they're blessed with long longevity. So it costs mm -hmm. a lot of money yep. you know, to care for them. Yep. So that's, that's why we have this program today is what the heck do we do? So what kind of insurance is there against, you know, let, you don't even have to get old. You could have a car wreck or you get, you know, it could fall down and do something. Mm -hmm. Like I met this woman whose son played football. He got injured with an ACL, you know, tear. And they, the orthopedic surgeon screwed it up. Now the kid can't walk. Mm. So now she's in this lawsuit because the kid can't walk. It, it lost his football career and all that. So it could be any, it could come from anything, you know, beyond old age, right? I mean, yeah. Health, yeah. health is a very important, expensive subject, what I'm, what I'm trying to say. No question about it. As you said, it's the leading cause of bankruptcy. So if you're in your 20s or 30s watching this and you have parents or grandparents, I would seriously encourage them to get a long-term care policy to cover this need because they will need it. If you're in your 40s or 50s or 60s, you should seriously consider getting a, a long-term care policy for yourself and your spouse if you have one. 
because as we talked about earlier, it's absolutely devastating. So what the type of insurance that you would need is basically a long-term care policy. And there are all kinds of long-term care policies with all different types of, of, of bells and whistles. But on average, on the low end, you'd be looking at something that would cost about $900 a year. And then that's unlimited on the upside in terms of premium based on daily amounts that you want to cover yourself for and then a maximum cap on how much you want to cover yourself for. And then there's all kinds of bells and whistles in between. Um, but this is extremely, extremely important because you do not want to end up in a government subsidized facility for the remaining part, the remaining years of your life, because that is not a place where you want to be. You want to be living in your building across the street in Scottsdale uh, where they have all the nice accommodations and fun things to do. So, well, I tell you, one of the reasons I'm such an advocate for financial education and all this is number one, I don't trust financial planners, as you know. You know, I have long discussions on that one. It's six weeks and they're planning your future. I'm going, holy miracle. These guys came and walk and chew gum at the same time and they're going to plan my future. But also, I got turned down for long term health. Huh. And that was kind of a wake up call. They said, your health is too bad. Yeah. And I went, wow. Because, you know, and sometimes, the, you know, if you let life be your best teacher, sometimes it is the best teacher if you're open to being taught. Mm -hmm. So when the, this was years and years ago, I got turned down for my health care. And because I had, you know, I've had, had, had to have open heart surgery. And all that. That's why Dr. Gopalan's part of our team and Nick, Dr. Mm -hmm. Nicole's part of our team because health is a very important part of our lives. So mm -hmm. I, I not only did I have to get healthier, and especially after COVID, because what Dr. Kopalin said to me, he's a, he's a heart transplant specialist and a doctor of acupuncture. He says, COVID is a function of bad health. He says, if you have good health, you won't get it. You know, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that you'll not get it, but he says, it's not as bad. Yeah. So anyway, it was a good wake up call for me. And, but that was kind of my response to it is when I had a chance to buy the um, healthcare facility. I bought it because I couldn't get health insurance, <laughs> you know? and and now I make millions millions a year from this healthcare facility. Plus, I don't pay tax on it, but not too many people can do that. Yeah, does that make sense? You know what I mean? So, what does a person do when they get turned down? I mean, just keep going. Well, you, you, they get healthier, like you did with with Rada <laughs> and Nicole. Um, that's one avenue. Yeah, because because your medical history will have an impact on whether or not you qualify for a long-term care policy, or it may cost more because you have medical history, medical issues in the past. So the first thing you need to do is just apply, get that process going. Who, so would, they, there's, who, who would they talk to? Is it just an ordinary insurance agent or how you, do you, you find can, that? You can go to an ordinary insurance agent. Most of them do offer long-term care in terms of in, in, on top of other types of insurance or even a financial planner. Um, when I was a financial planner, I was, I was offering these plans as well many years ago. So um, yeah, those would be the two people that you would go to. Okay. And then um, it's, it's such a serious thing. I'm going, holy man. Cause I, I, I was <clears throat> yesterday was nine 11, you know, and I was, I was walking around the Prescott fairgrounds looking at all the people mm -hmm. And Americans aren't that healthy, no. if you know what I mean. You know, they had the big the big turkey legs and the enchiladas and all this stuff. I'm <laughs> going, sure is good life here in America, but boy, yeah. I tell you, it's not healthy. I, yeah. I, I took yeah. everything by power not to buy a turkey leg. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, those, those people are going to pay the price, unfortunately, um, not only physically, but financially as well. And so many people think that the government is going to take care of them in the end, and that's just not the case. So what do, um, what do you know about Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, yeah. and all that? What do you know about that? So, so there's a lot of confusion over this. And people think that they have Medicare um, that will cover them for long-term care insurance. Um, and by the way, long-term care is used when you can't do two out of seven ADLs, uh, activities of daily living. So once you cannot do two, that's eating, uh, dressing, bathing, those kind of things, then you would qualify to enter a nursing care facility. But Medicare does not cover you for long-term care. Medicare only kicks in when you've been hospitalized and, and, and you've been in the hospital for three days um, and you're admitted to a Medicare facility within 30 days of your prior hospital stay and you need skilled uh, nursing care. So for example, my dad, as you know, dad, uh, Robert, 
40 days ago, he slipped in the shower and he fractured his spine and broke two ribs, 92 years old. So he was admitted to the hospital for about 10 days. And then they took him to a skilled nursing facility where he was in for another 10 days. That was covered under Medicare because he came from a hospital and he was in rehabilitation. Now, Medicare will cover the first 20 days of that skilled nursing facility. After that, from day 20 to day 100, it covers up to about $195 per day. Anything over that is out of pocket. And right now, the facility he is in costs $500 a day. Holy and since Christ. he's a Yes, yeah, since he's a, and this is a small town, fairly affordable place to live. I mean, you look at places like San Francisco or even downtown Scottsdale or, or other uh, more, you know, richer communities, it's going to be way more than $500 a day. So he is just coming up on his 20 days. And then after that, we'd be, we'd be responsible for about $300 a day after that. And then after, if he's in there for 100 days and, and over, then it's 100% out of pocket. So that's, that's Medicare. Medicaid, on the other hand, is when you have no assets. You basically have you've drawn down your assets, your savings to two thousand dollars or less. That's when you would qualify for a government-run facility. It's a it's a joint federal and state assistant program um, that finances uh, health care for low-income people. It's really just a skilled nursing facility. And again, this is not where you want to end up for the remaining years. And you could be in this facility forever as long as you 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 draw down broke. your savings to yeah, exactly. You and broke. you have no income. Yeah. Okay. So you can only imagine what that facility is like. Okay. When we come back, we'll be going to more questions about I'm gonna ask Sarah to ask questions on this because it's a very, very important subject that's oftentimes not discussed until it's too late. So when we come back again, we're talking to a good friend John McGregor, a fellow from Hawaii who had to leave the People's Republic. <laughs> you know, so many people are leaving Hawaii because it's too woke. It they is just to. too woke. And it's frightening how Nazi is getting there. Yeah. I mean, I love Hawaii. The sunsets are beautiful. The sunrises are beautiful. But boy, I tell you, the, the government is communist. It's horrible. Yep. So we come back. We're talking to John McGregor, a dear friend from Hawaii. We'll be right back. The Elite backed by the accreditation laws, have had access to all the early investment opportunities. They have had the opportunity to invest in tech companies in the private markets before dumping their winners into the public markets for huge gains. But now you can take back your power. Introducing the Chainraise platform, the platform built for the people, by the people. On Chainraise, you will find blockchain companies, tech startups, real estate deals, and more that you can invest in. Anyone 18 and over across the world can create a diversified portfolio with under $1,000. Go hunting for the next tech unicorn or look for cash flow opportunities all through one platform. Join us in taking back your power. Go to chainraise.io today. Feeling powerless over current events and your financial future? Financial freedom is your freedom. Robert Kiyosaki is the best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Over 40 million people have taken Robert's advice. Now it's your turn. Attend Robert's free virtual wealth building event. Claim your free access now at richdadfree.com. Don't wait, access is limited. Go to richdadfree.com. That's richdadfree.com. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about health care and how expensive it can get, and especially today for my generation, the boomer generation, 10,000 of us retiring every day. The question is how much money do they have? And the stats are showing right now because of um, <clears throat> this wonderful Biden plan of build back better, or whatever the heck he's doing, is Americans are dipping into their savings because they can't afford the inflation. Inflation is killing them. So the savings are being depleted from the inside via, uh, via inflation. You can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, or YouTube, and leave us a comment whenever you listen. And all of our podcasts are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them for one reason. is because we're purely informational and educational. We sell nothing. We don't make a recommendation what to buy, what to sell. 
But also, if you have friends, family members, or somebody who needs to listen to this program, go to richdadradio.com and ask them to listen to it, especially if you're, let's say, you're in your 30s and you, you have a parent that's in their 60s. This is a very important program to listen to because it's something the family should discuss. So our guest today is John McGregor. He's a fellow from Hawaii, but he had to leave Hawaii like I had to leave because it's just too, just too woke. Anyway, uh, we're talking about healthcare. So Sarah, what com- what comments? So during the last segment, you know, John shared some staggering statistics about what it costs per day um, to have his father in a Medicare, you know, facility or under the care of Medicare, right? The long term, long term. So I was doing the math, and for those eighty days then that aren't covered, right? That's yep. twenty four thousand. That would yes, that would cost twenty four thousand dollars to keep my dad in this facility for 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 twenty from day twenty to day one hundred. My point is, so I have two parents that are seventy five. This is obviously something that's going to be or is a concern of, for my siblings and I because they're getting at that age. But yes. but this is a crushing. This this could crush a middle class family. Is an expense like this, and so the alternative is Medicaid facility, yep. which John, you're saying. Nobody wants to go. There. Nobody wants to go there. Can you talk about that for like what the alternative is if they if you can't pay? Well, there's two alternatives. You move back in with the, the you, your parents move back in with you, Sarah, mm-hmm. and you take care of them. And sadly, that's what happens to so many families that can't afford this stuff, where they don't want to be in a Medicaid facility. If if they need that type of skilled nursing that you cannot deliver or, or provide. They would have to spend all their assets down to less than two thousand dollars in savings. Then they would qualify for Medicaid, but and this, then they would so, go into that government-run facility. Mm-hmm. So Sarah's siblings, your your, would have to be also come destitute and poor to qualify. No, just the parents. Just that the, were parents. the parents. Yeah. yeah. So the alternative yeah. is either we take care of them, or yes. they would have to divest everything. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just thinking even, so I looked into like the facility, you know, the house, the senior living that Robert um, owns mm-hmm. the property. We called it to ask how much it would care, what, how much it would cost. And if you lived in a one bedroom, it looked like an apartment, you know, but meals included, it was $4,000 a month, which not to me, that wasn't terrible if everything's included, but the more services you added. So yeah. if you needed long-term, you know, to be in the long-term memory care portion of this facility, you're talking eight to $10,000 a month. Yeah. And by the way, these costs are increasing way more than inflation. Um, uh, The average cost of of home care services increased by about $1,000 annually between 2004 and 2020. And the average uh, private room in a nursing home jumped by about $2,500 each year during that same time period. So these, these things are going up. And the reason is COVID had something to do with it because these nursing care facilities had to adopt to PPE and new regulations and compliance, but it really boils down to a supply and demand issue. We talked about 10,000 baby boomers turning 65 every single day, and 70% of them are going to need this type of service or are going into the service. That's a huge strain on supply and trained professionals. There's just not enough of them. Hence, that's why, that's why these rates are going up. And by the way, I didn't mention this. The sooner you buy your long-term care policy, the cheaper it is. The longer you wait, the costs go up. That's why I really strongly encourage people to, to shop for a policy today, not tomorrow, because every single day you wait, the cost of those premiums will go up. So again, the, um, cause I, I've never, this was, we we're teaching at Arizona state university this Saturday, this last Friday. And that's the one thing that Tom Wheelwright, you know, our, our CPA was talking about. He says, part of your team, you have to, you have to have a good insurance agent. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I never, I don't even think that way. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so how do you recommend a person find a good insurance agent? Yeah. Because there's a lot, and, of, and, and, a lot of scum out there too, right? You know what I mean? Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and I'll get into that in a second, but there are these policies now that I didn't have when I was, when I was selling these is that uh, they combine life insurance and long-term care insurance together. So there's a lot of new things that have come out that make it more affordable, make it more uh, flexible. Um, but to answer your question, yeah, you have to be very careful with who you decide to use. And do not choose the first person you bought. 
you know, don't go to the free or the, the first person you met. Don't go to the free chicken dinner and be enamored with them and then suddenly sign up on the spot. I've seen that way too many times. You have to interview at least three professionals before you decide who you choose from. And be very careful with insurance people. A lot of them are good people, but they can, they believe they can solve every problem in America with insurance. And um, when, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? And insurance people are typical, typically the ones that will just use insurance to solve all of your financial problems. So um, what I would be looking at, I would, in, I would definitely in, interview an insurance agent, but also look for financial planners that offer this as well and, and, and get a variety of quotes um, from different people and, uh, and really do your due diligence. So I, I really see this as, a, you know, just as important as I would get car insurance. I may not ever oh, need geez. it, yeah. but there probably will be a day that I need it, no. you know? So, it, and so I can't urge, you know, I urge people, especially like John was saying, do it younger than mm-hmm. later. It's going to save you a, a way more money. But also the reason why I, I encourage you to listen to the podcast, again at rich dad, uh, radio.com this is a discussion for the family mm-hmm. for your how many how many uh, siblings so i have three other siblings yeah my sister and two brothers yeah and then wow and plus you have your husbands yeah and, uh, and that's a whole other story because my parents planned very you know early on so i i feel pretty comfortable that this is, won't be a long discussion with them um because they've planned for it on my husband's side on uh, on the other hand the total opposite I mean, his mother's 74 years old and she's still working because mm-hmm. she has to, not because she enjoys it. Mm-hmm. Any comments, John? Yeah, that's so common. I see that so often. And, you know, it's, it's a serious discussion, Sarah, that you're going to have to have with your husband to figure out what the game plan is because these, these health issues don't gradually occur. They happen immediately. I mean, mm-hmm. one morning I'm I'm sitting there having my coffee. The next morning, the, the next moment I hear my dad slip and fall, boom, fractured spine and two ribs. Mm-hmm. So there's no way to plan for that. So you gotta have a you gotta have a game plan now, Sarah, going into this, because anything can happen at any time, especially at that age. Yeah. So once again, we have richdadradio.com just for this play this for this reason. Get together with friends, family, and associates and listen, discuss now, and then take action. Anything else, Sarah? I mean, well, this is frightening. This is I'm terrifying just thinking, me, too, but... aside, John, is there any other, um, aside from the long ter- long ter- long-term long care policy, is there anything us in our, even I'm in my 40s, um, that we could be doing now? Um, so my, you know, children or nieces or nephews don't have to take care of my siblings and I. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think just going back to exactly what we've been talking about is is I would meet with a, a an insurance professional, someone who really understands this, and seriously consider getting a long term care policy, even if it's an inexpensive, um, you know, kind of kind of sk- skim down version. Get something, Sarah. You really need that. Got it. So this episode is really just a warning, just a dire warning. Yeah. Again, well, I, I, I think I, it's... in the years I've been doing this, this is. If not the, if if not one of, it's the biggest financial threat a family will face. This need for long term care. Seven out of ten people are going to need this care. Most of them will need it for two years. A handful will need it for five. So you well, can just imagine what that does to someone saving into retirement. Well, and just as Robert had opened the show, it's the number one cause of bankruptcy. Yep. Is that? This is a question. <laughs> this is a question I have. So let's say. My parents have to file bankruptcy, you know, at the co- something tragic happens, catastrophic happens. How does that work? Does that pass down to us kids? Does that no. bankrupt in there? No, 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 no. Unless you were a dependent of, no, that does not. So, okay. and by the way, you can't just spend down your money thinking you can get into Medicaid because they're going to do a look back on your money to see where it went. Because a lot of people think, well, I've got a hundred thousand dollars. I don't want to, yeah, I'm going to hide it. You can't do that. It's got to be a legitimate situation where you're in dire financial straits in order to qualify for Medicaid. A lot of people try to play games and then it comes back to bite them. And then the final thing, you know, like for me is I have siblings who are my age and they're in, um, sure, they're not the best financial health. Yep. And then, so that's, that's going to backfire on me. Plus Kim has siblings. Yep. So, you can so expect is, that phone is, call, Robert. 
this is a major, major, major problem. Mm -hmm. And the boomers are getting older and older and older, and the kids are not prepared. And I was uh, saying that after after COVID nineteen, a lot of middle class are now eating into their savings just to cover inflation. So this is not good. Eating into their savings yeah. and increasing their credit card spending. Yep. Yep. And and the and the, sadly the the overall strategy that I see from most people is they just hope everything will work out in the end. Right. Right. And I will tell you, hope is not a strategy, a financial <laughs> strategy. So, John, what's what's the title of your book again? I should oh, thanks, Robert. Um, got a copy right here. It's the uh, top ten reasons the rich go broke. Powerful stories that'll transform your financial life forever. So good. And John's John dealt with a lot of these people who were rich and yeah. are now poor. Yeah. You know, Tragic stories of people that I knew and you knew, Robert, right. that had everything and then lost it all. And one of the stories is health related, just yeah. this topic that we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So, John, Tragic. if our listeners had additional questions, is there a way to contact you or get a hold of you if they need have further questions? Oh, absolutely. They can find me on my website and they can contact me there through the uh, contact form. And yeah, feel free. If anyone has any questions or they need a referral for a uh, professional, happy to do so. And you, you can reach me at uh, John. Mac Gregor, that's M A C, MacGregor.net. Great. Happy I'll include a link in the show notes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you're going to be swamped, my friend. You're going to be swamped. Uh, happy to help anybody. Yeah, so, and, and I don't sell this stuff anymore. So there's nothing in it for me. I just want to make sure as many people are protected <laughs> and looked after as I, as I can. So, yeah. So, once again, John, thanks very much. You know, fellow thank rugby you. player from Hawaii and all this stuff. And <clears throat> he is a good friend with a guy named. Barack Obama from oh. God. John, John, and, John and Barack went to the same school and he wasn't a poor black kid, was he? No, not at all. Not at all. No. He lived in a very affluent neighborhood, went to Punahou. You know, it's an affluent private high school. Yeah. His mom was I, quite successful. Yeah. I couldn't afford to go to Punahou. That's a, my, my father wouldn't send me anyway, because, but anyway, but he now is one of the, owns one of the biggest estates in Hawaii and Martha's Vineyard and all this. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, as I always say, people not, don't look at what they say. Don't listen to what they say. Watch what they do. <laughs> and the first people he bailed out, Obama bailed out, was General Motors and the banks. That's right. You know, that's where he gets his campaign money from. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this is an interesting time in the world right now. And so I'm yep. glad people are listening to Rich Dad Radio. And John, thanks for being a part of the Rich Dad team. Thank you. So Always you. great to see you. Good. Take care. So we'll come back. We'll have a final word with Sarah. Thank you. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Robert Kiyosaki, the good news and bad news. And this time is about health care. And you can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, and YouTube. Please leave a comment. But most importantly... We don't sell anything. You know, it's John McGregor. He's a dear friend from Hawaii, friend of Barack Obama. And, um, <clears throat> you know, all the stories they tell about poor people and all this stuff. But anyway, um, please listen to this program again at richdadradio.com and discuss with your family because health care is a family issue. And if you have, like, you know, Sarah, you have, you have siblings, brothers, yeah. sisters. I have brothers and sisters and all they have are master's degrees and they think they're protected. I'm going, oh my God. And then you get that phone call and you say, you know, I can't afford this. Can you give me the money? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so it's best to go to richdadradio.com, listen to this with your family and friends and start the discussion. Then decide what you're going to do. Uh, final words. Yeah, Sarah. I think even just starting the discussion, right, is is the Healthy. first is the first step. Yeah, we we've had shows on with Dr. Nicole and Rada. You know, health is wealth, and if you're healthy, um, you don't think about it. You don't have to, and you don't have to, right? Um, so there's that aspect of it. But then, as John described, accidents happen. Something can happen in a split of a sec, you know, a second, and change the course of your financial life forever. Right. And so it's better to plan and prepare um, and get protected now while you can before the emergency happens. Because once the emergency happens, like, you know, he described if you're on Medicare, um, generally you're probably in the upper middle class anyway. But still, he, that's $24,000 you'd spend in 90 days. It's a lot of money. That's a lot of money for most families, right? Yeah. So... Um, I, this was an important show because I think, especially as the baby boomer generation is aging, 
um, it's a big concern for their children. But it goes systemic, it goes wide, you know, kids, grandkids, mm -hmm. futures. Right, you know, absolutely. College education, if the kids aren't working, if they're lazy. I had one, one friend, his daughter, somebody, hit somebody with their car. Right. And they lost everything. I mean, they were rich one day, but just because the daughter's boyfriend or husband in their car hit somebody in the park in a crosswalk, yeah. they got sued and lost everything yep. because they had no um, asset protection. So this is not, you know, this is why the Rich Dad Radio program is to let you be aware, but, but most importantly, you know, go to richdadradio.com and start your discussion with your friends and family, plus your family right now. Yeah. And as John said, he's welcome to make a referral or help you if you have any questions. Just I'll put the link in the description below. It's johnmcgregor.net um, because it, there's no time like the present to get started on this. When so. you're healthy. When, when you're healthy, you're before healthy. you need it. Yeah. yeah. So once again, thank you, Sarah. Thanks, for John, John McGregor, and thank you all for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show. Thank you.